Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to AgriFood Conversations brought to you by iSelect Fund, the Van Trump Report, the Yield Lab Institute, and Family Farms Group. My name is Tom Bunn. I'm an associate on the iSelect Fund team, and I'm excited to welcome you all to our discussion today. AgriFood Conversations is all about driving innovation in agriculture. Each month, we highlight a specific theme, and this month's theme is water management. On today's call, we are joined by Thomas Dewey, VP of Business Development, and Max Defy, CEO of Mate Systems. The Mate Systems platform provides a precise irrigation calendar for every zone in the, in the field, allowing a farmer to be in total control from their smart device 24 hours a day. <clears throat> a complete irrigation solution for agriculture, Mate Water Guard is a cloud-based system that requires no wiring, no Wi-Fi, and no new infrastructure to deploy. Each of you knows companies are more likely to succeed with the right network of customers, talent, investors, and advisors. We've invited you to this call because you are some of the smartest, most talented people in Mate Systems Market, your potential customers for their products and services. You've built a similar company, or you have unique expertise and understand the challenges and opportunities that they will face. Before we get started, we have a quick poll question to get a better idea of who we have on the call today. Please take a few seconds to answer. A few process comments while the poll is running. We are not soliciting investment in any way whatsoever. This presentation is to provide information to help Mate Systems find customers, mentors, and other strategic relationships that can help them grow their business. Secondly, you can use the Q&A box to ask a question at any time, and we will answer as many questions as time allows at the end of the presentation. We will have a dedicated Q&A time at the end as soon as they are finished with their uh, presentation here. Finally, this presentation and webinar is being recorded and will be available for replay. So with that, I am pleased to introduce Thomas Dewey and Max Safai. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your last name, Max, from Mate Systems. Take it away, guys. Tom, thank you very much. And we appreciate the opportunity to visit with all of you today. I want to thank the AgriFood Conversation team and iSelect in particular for their time in coordinating this. We'd love to talk to you about M8 Systems, the automated AIoT Ag Intelligence Solution for Precision Water Management. I'm Tom Dewey, VP of Business Development. With me, and you'll hear from more in the Q&A section, is Max Safai, the CEO and founder of the company. So I'd like to tell you how our story began. We're all started on the small farm. In the small family farm. Friends of Max's, frankly, came to him and said, look, you've been very successful in startups, in automation, in standing up things like the Amazon Go store, leading engineering teams to do that. We've got some basic problems in the farm and it's costing us our business. One grower in particular was an avocado farmer down in the San Diego area and described the problem in detail about leaks. They would have gushers like the one in the image here, two, three, four times a year and incidental leaks along the feeder lines and the drip emitters uh, every week. And it wasn't seemingly a problem until I realized what the financial impact was with the unexpected spikes in their water bills. And with a combination of labor rates up, water rates exceedingly high during the drought years in California, and these unexpected breaks, it drove some of the businesses, including this one, out. But what we heard from them and from others was they wanted automation, but it needed to be trusted. It needed to be one where they could really rely that the automation worked and didn't itself cause leaks. Leak detection was very important. The accuracy of the water amount delivered was very important. And it had to work out of the box and be rugged enough to work in the farm. As we looked more broadly beyond the individual family farms in California and looked regionally, we saw the critical problems of overdrafted water basins, particularly in the Central Valley. The persistent droughts that just in a month's time have broadened and grown. And the labor challenges that are both uh, from a rising rate perspective and the shortage of growers. Growers we're talking to are desperately uh, seeking to retain their good talent that they have. And automation may give them a way to do that if they can do it effectively. On a global basis, it's, it's all around food security, scarcity of water, and the impact globally. We all recall at the beginning of the pandemic when our grocery shelves were empty. Well, we see the worldwide opportunity for this type of solution at over a million farms where there's pressurized irrigation to be in excess of 90 billion in hardware and 12 billion annual recurring revenue from SaaS technologies. 
It isn't to say that ag tech hasn't advanced irrigation because it has. We've gone a long way since the aqueducts of ancient Rome and from the flood irrigation of recent years to the drip irrigation of today. And there's been a lot of promise of automation with meters and sensors and even imagery to be able to track things with many solutions out there. But there are some lingering issues. And these are the issues we're hearing from growers. Issues around labor, as I mentioned, they are literally sending operators out to turn on valves, then open the pump at the end of four or five hours, go back out to the field of tomatoes and do the reverse operation, turning off the pump and turning off the valve. And it's, the belief is that they could increase the effectiveness of their teams if they could automate that confidently and that one person could cover four to five times as much territory. They also spend a lot of time uh, scouting for leaks and complying with regulations on water applied on an accurate basis, how much applied per field. The leaks that I mentioned happen on mains two to three times a year, lines one to three times a week. Some you see University of California Cooperative Extension and other vendors have estimated 27 leak events per thousand acres per year. Accuracy is a big issue. Um, if they can get water, they need to be able to apply the right amount and not distress the crops. So it's around irregular flow that becomes a challenge. With water basins distressed, it is not uncommon for one grower to be pumping water from a well. And at the same time, the neighboring farm is pumping from that well. And suddenly the water you think you're getting isn't really reaching the field. I'll show you more about that later. But also there's a challenge of accounting for shared resources. There's a leak which farms paying for it when they're pumping from the same source and going through the same resources. And lastly, the equipment point. Farms have not just gone out and bought one brand to service all the very acres. Over time, they have purchased several different brands of monitoring tools, controlling or, or regulatory, uh, not regulatory, but um, actuators for valves and, and pump boosters. And then they have dashboards and they wish they could be able to combine all of them into one source to gather the information, to do the analysis and to control the devices in the field. Further, they require no wires, no PCs, no controllers in the field. They don't want anything that doesn't grow out in the field or the limited so it doesn't disrupt their operation. And they wanna be able to trust the automation and it needs to be farm rugged. What M8 is doing is connecting and collecting data with the M8 farm link tool. It's a low profile device that has all the communications hardware to connect across the fields and to attach to a variety of soil moisture, reservoir level, weather station, flow and pressure, as well as actuators for wells, pump boosters and valves. It is rugged for the field, it's low profile as I mentioned, and has multiple standard ports to accommodate different brands and equipment. These are reference design applications that are available today out of the box. Let me show you how this works. The different devices are across the field. They connect at the ground level and there's redundant connectivity device to device up to five miles or longer in, in uh, communication at ground level through foliage and moisture. And then there's a device to cloud two-way communication. There's no change in infrastructure required, no gateways, wires, integrated application is all done through the cloud and it's self-powered, if you will, from solar recharging batteries. The second thing we're doing is controlling precisely with the water guard tool. On the left, you'll see one of the apparatus with the circuitry in the orange box, the valve digitally controlled, a flow meter and a pressure sensor. That combination allows us to regulate the amount of water going out, measure it and account for it properly in all of the reporting. It also comes with standard uh, dashboards and control devices from mobile where it can be managed from the field or from the farm office. It's pre-configured with AIoT valve pressure flow as I indicated. It's all cloud-based for processing and leverages the redundant communications and does give accurate accounting of the water delivered for tracking purposes. And of course, it needs to be competitively tracked. Here's how that part of it works. Basically, the user can indicate from a schedule in the mobile what they want to have irrigated. They can control by both volume and time. So they're not guessing and trying to translate a three inch pipe at 100 PSI running for six hours is this much water. The AI assisted 
tools ensure that the valves are actuated in the right sequence, that you don't blow out valves, and that pumps are closed before valves are closed. And there's active notification too. If in a case like it's illustrated in the right in the mobile, three days running, you're getting 24,000 gallons delivered to the field. But on Thursday, it turns out that we didn't get the full allocation of water we expected in the time we'd scheduled. It'll give an alert and notification to the grower so that they can either run it longer or run another irrigation sequence. The third component is automating with leak guard protection. Leak guard is what gives growers the confidence finally to automate the irrigation. The way this works is that the system is monitoring 24 seven and checking for leaks and clogs. If it detects an anomaly, the AI technology will shut down the leak and notify the grower that their leak has been detected and that the shutdown has been completed. Um, there are emergency alerts that are sent to the proper folks to mitigate blowouts at any time during the operation. And this particularly allows uh, growers to redeploy resources, whether it be from leak scouts and drone imagery and DU type tests, or just in their accounting by not having to worry about the leaks as much and what it's gonna to do to, the, to their water bill. The fourth thing we're doing is providing more resources, the opportunity for the grower to use the resources more effectively and reduce their operating expense. This is around, first off, all the devices have GPS signal on them so that they can't be lost in the field. If they're placed in different places from year to year, they can be located. In addition, the solution is built to scale over large territory, which allows you to have the farm team redeployed so that one worker can cover a vastly greater territory for inspecting for the growth habits and so forth. And it ultimately results in water savings on top of the labor savings, getting the right amount of water every time to the right fields, avoiding irregular flows and avoiding undetected leaks. <clears throat> so in addressing these uh, persistent problems, the status quo is relatively labor intensive, four times the labor needed to manually operate systems and scout for leaks. It's costly if you're using drones or perhaps satellite imagery there's also a latency or lag effect that is uh, costly in terms of the water loss if you in fact have a leak. Water losses themselves can amount to seven to 12% increase in annual water budgets, we're told by growers. And it's a, a timely solution that we're taking so that leaks are detected in real time, not that uh, latency effect that I mentioned a moment ago. Crops then are less likely to be at risk because of irregular flows or floods series and UC Cooperative Extension from their studies indicate that a 10% increase in stress could reduce yield by 5%. With the M8 solutions, we'd encourage companies to uh, conduct a field test, find out for themselves how easy it is to set it up and operate, how it can reduce operating expense, how they can automate finally with confidence, reduce, cross, reduce crop risk, and in fact, reach break even on the cost solutions in 12 to 30 months. So with that, about the product and, and the, the problem we're addressing the solution, let me take a moment just to describe a little bit about the company, the leadership team in particular. This team has several wins together. It has tremendously relevant skills and experience. Maxify, you'll meet in a moment. Others from our engineering team, our finance and sales. Our go-to-market plan is built on a business model with two parts. There's a hardware component, either the circuitry alone, the farm link or the farm link with integration that we've pre-integrated with valve controls and such uh, sensors. That's the hardware component, uh, the one-time capital expense upfront for a grower that can be amortized as well. Part two is the recurring revenue that comes from the cloud service, the AI processing, the data the dashboards, the analytics. Our go-to-market strategy is uh, stage one in beta tests, which we are just finishing the onboarding of beta clients and moving into revenue sales this quarter. Our first revenue customer is now committed. We're selling with a direct team to our larger growers and recruiting irrigation consultants and other partners to help reach broad adoption. In stage three, we expect to expand geographically across the country in different regions following the same model. 
Our target market, as I think I mentioned before, was pipe irrigated high value crops, particularly like citrus, nuts, berries, alfalfa, and so forth. In, in a typical year, we'd say south of Stockton, where water rates are, are higher in the neighborhood of 400 to um, 750, even 1,800 an acre foot. This year with the drought, we're seeing even Northern California water rates reaching 750 an acre foot and Southern California rates, if you can find the water, exceeding 2,000 an acre foot. We hope that situation doesn't persist for the sake of our growers and, and the food supplies. But we're looking for farmers that are uh, typically in the 500 to 10,000 acre uh, range. And you'll see, uh, here's the estimate for the total available market, 92 billion hardware to extend those models across the globe and 12 billion in, occurring re in annually occurring revenue from the SAS model. I wanna thank you for your time and your attention today and let you know that if any of you do have referrals or introductions, uh, we would respectfully appreciate that for customers, channel partners, Ag Tech Advisory Council members, and strategic opportunities. The Ag Tech Advisory Council, I want to stress and point out, we're looking for individuals, an individual, for example, in the Ag Tech space, uh, probably non-competitive, that has failed and succeeded in this space. We have some academic resources we're eyeing, eyeing but are open to others as well. With that, Tom, uh, why don't we open up for uh, Q&A? Great. Thomas and Max, thanks for joining us. <clears throat> Apologies for uh, mispronouncing the name of the of the company earlier, but uh, very cool presentation. And uh, now we have some time for, for Q&A. So again, we have a little bit of time here for some questions. There are a couple ways to do this. You can either go to the Q&A pane at the bottom, type in a question, or you can raise your hand and... I can unmute you and you can ask the MA team your question directly. But I guess the good thing, can you talk a little bit more about the, the origin story and kind of the, the the genesis of the technology? And love to hear kind of kind of from whence the idea came and and the the, the founder story. Max, yeah, hi. First of all, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you to all of the organizers and people who are attending. Appreciate that very much. I do have some friends in San Diego County. They are farmers, and mainly avocado farmers, some citrus, and uh, some of the exotics. And uh, throughout the years, I kept seeing more and more trees dying. And I asked one, one of my friends, Al, I said, Al, what's going on? And he said, the water is so expensive, people can't afford irrigating. And actually, one person that you see on our website, uh, they lost their farm because it just could not afford the water price. Then I said, well, what is the reason? And they said it's mainly for us is undetected leaks. In groves, for example, they turn on the water for uh, 48 hours sometimes, uh, run an, uh, like an almond farm or avocado farm, maybe 10, 11 hours, uh, once a week, maybe twice a week if it's very hot. So they're not really going around checking everything, turning on, turning off valves. You know, trees are there, they just turn on the water, come back the next day, turn it on. And so if for the 11 to 24 hours time, water is just gushing out somewhere, they don't know until, especially if it's a large farm, until they get the bill at the end of the month. And some of these bills that are easily that $25,000 a month, easily. So, so I started looking into it and I realized there's a lot of challenges. There's no infrastructure. Like mainly what they have in many, many of the farms is, uh, is uh, water pipes. That's all they got. And so I had to come up with a system with my team, a system that is, does not perturb or you know, ask the farmer to change any other infrastructure and just installs and directly connects to the cloud. Easy, just robust and, and, and incredibly intuitive. So then once I put that in as a, a, you know, in our test, then they started asking about, well, you know, what about soil moisture? What about root zone sensing? What about the forecast? What about temperature? What about rain detectors and so on? And I realized that actually they need more stuff in a co comprehensive and coherent dashboard to have this ag, and, ag intelligence platform. So we started adding the farm link and we started adding other things, even though we're not reading the hardware business. But I looked around and I realized these, all of these little pieces of hardware are not really designed in a robust way. For example, some of these things, they, they claim to be at 800 megahertz sort of wireless, but you go over 200 yards, they can't connect anymore. 
and they have to like elevate it or, or do all kinds of all kinds of play. So I so I put the first prototype together. It was a kind of an algorithmic prototype, and I did version two, and then you know the team started to come on board, and I'm really blessed because a lot of people that I've worked with me they really trust me, and they either they act like they like me or they do like me. <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> but, but we are we have we have created something that's phenomenal, and right now we have in one of our farms uh, a product, and I leave them uncovered because I want the sun to beat on them and high you know temperature and low temperature at night and everything just beat the heck out of the hardware. And it's been running basically with zero failures. And we have like several valves deployed in several farms. So, so far, knock on wood, everything is going well. And we're ready to actually now deploy to a very large farm. And uh, on our farms, our farmers to be in business. I mean, hey, water is becoming more and more expensive. And uh, you've got to like make it count. So you can't waste it. But we're now a lot more than just leak protection and fog protection. We're really precision in water management that uh, dispensed by time, dispensed by volume, and then we bring, and by the way, we, we also have control for uh, pumps and wells and uh, booster pumps and all kinds of stuff. So all of it through one dashboard. So you don't need to go anywhere. Then when you go to the crop sensors, like people like uh, crop robots, like carrots and tomatoes, what they really are, and like Tom said earlier, worried about is the, the label cuts, you know, and they need Automation, they're not so worried about leaks, but they're really worried about labor costs. So they need automation. So different vineyards, uh, different farms, different needs, basically. I guess a related question, different farms, different needs. What's what's kind of the competitive situation? How do you how do you differentiate yourself? I know it's becoming increasingly uh, <clears throat> crowded field. How do you, how, how would you say you differentiate yourself here? Well, we, so we, we have an AI engine that's uh, learning. It's, a, it's based on a macro chain, if anyone's familiar with that. But basically, it looks for anomalies and it educates itself as you're using the system and it goes through the irrigation cycle. And so we can actually fairly accurately detect leaks and detect clogs and Anomalies, basically. The other thing that we, we do is that uh, if all your neighbors are irrigating at the same time, sometimes you have like no pressure. So even though you think you're irrigating, this you've programmed your your traditional irrigation equipment to irrigate between six a.m. and six p.m., nothing is happening, and you think you're irrigating, but nothing is happening because there's no pressure. Everybody else is is irrigating. So you have to court. So we have technology that that senses that. that as active notification and brings the farmer into a dialogue and says, hey, right now there's no pressure, there's no irrigation happening. You want to reschedule, you want to do this, you want to do that, we give some remedies. Um, other, I mean, I don't want to badmouth other companies, they, they have great products, so you know, they you know, no doubt. But uh, we think we I think this this ag market is ready for a truly you know soup to not soup to nuts. A redone high tech solution and uh, that, that is robust and works. So, uh, you know, nobody does what, like for example, dispensing by volume, nobody offers that. Nobody offers uh, one dashboard that brings soil moisture, active notification, remote access, flow, pressure, temperature, weather, forecasting, vigor, all of that into one, one uh, scorecard and, and then also suggest. You know, hey, maybe you want to do this, or maybe you want to do that. Give some some recommendation. So we're we're, we're trying to be really proactive about making sure that the farmer is empowered and on top of their farm. I might amplify one part of that. We see uh, competitive tools that will have parts of the solution, but not the whole of what uh, Max just described. For example, there are companies that are in the data reading mode. So they're pulling data up from sensors and putting into dashboards, but they're leaving all of the um, action to manual intervention. And there's no AI type control pre-processed on how to do that. Or it's integrated within a brand, but doesn't work across brands. Those are the two biggest issues you'll see across vendors. And I just want to add one other thing. In the, in the picture that you see on the screen right now, 
you see to the left of the, the main water card is on a U-channel chassis in orange, uh, a little bucket. And that little bucket is, is our next uh, sort of going forward a way of checking water quality and adhering to the Senate Bill 88 for uh, filing, you know, what are you water extraction point or where you dump your water, make sure that things don't reach into the ground. And there's an, not a lot of restrictions on farmers that have to constantly test their water and file it with seven different state agencies in California, which is a nightmare. We collect that data, we automate a PDF, we send it, et cetera. So we were really trying to help farmers be on top of their farms as opposed to paperwork. Great, thanks for that. So, you you guys have seem seem to be hit, hit have hit an inflection point with uh, your first customer here. Proof of concept is, you know, seems to be mostly in the in the rearview mirror. What sort of the the next twelve months look like for you guys from a development point of view as you transition from kind of a R and D and and technology proof of concept to uh, commercialization? What what are the things, the major things on your mind, and what are the next six to twelve months look like for you? I think the first thing is to set up the, the, the right super supply chain and bring the cost of the product to, a, to be extremely competitive with our, with our, uh, in our market. And so set up incoming inspection, make sure that we have the right tests. Uh, I guess I want, it, I want the product to be assembled in the, in the US. I want the product to have the final test in the U.S. and be shipped from the U.S. to the customers. Also, the reverse logistics. You know, we need to get our ducks in the row and be ready. And from a from a business standpoint, you know, I asked the team, Tom, and another gentleman, his name is Richard, but he's not here, to focus on the major farms and I'd rather have five big customers to start, and because it makes sense for them. You know, they're all about improving the bottom line. Typically speaking, when, when you are in a, in, a, in a market where margins are low, like for example, I think strawberries have very high margins, but carrots, they may not have very high margin. Whatever you do that saves money, it goes directly to the bottom line. So it, it's almost as if they're selling a lot more because now they're much more profitable from the bottom line. And so they're very excited about that. So we, we want to make sure that we're cost competitive from a hardware standpoint and we set up our, our cloud to get the supply chain going. And eventually, you know, we're discussing internally with, uh, with Tom, should we license our hardware to other, other manufacturers so they can do the same? And we sort of remove ourselves from hardware slowly but surely and uh, just focus on the cloud and data collection. Fantastic. Well, guys, how can the attendees here listening now and, and listening to the recording as it gets distributed to our network, how can they help you? Tom, um, you want to take that? Yeah, I think the, the big opportunities are, are, I'll just reiterate what's on the screen there. We would be grateful for referrals for customers, channel partners, appropriate kind of advisor individuals to join the council. And frankly, any strategic opportunity we may not have considered. This is, as Max said, fertile territory, and there's a lot of opportunities. I think the, the big wins will be when we bring the pieces together and stitch them together so that it's seamless for the grower, that they can monitor and control and have visibility to what's happening all the way throughout the year from the farm. From a customer perspective, we're looking for growers, primarily initially in the California markets. We'll be expanding eastward after that, probably in the middle of next year. And in the channel partner direction, it seems so far to us that the best direction to start is with folks who are specialists in irrigation, the irrigation consultants, folks that are advising on leveling fields to how to lay out the topography of irrigation, excuse me, to the agronomists that are making sure that the right nutrients are delivered through the irrigation systems. 
those are the trusted partners that farmers look to and, and we'd like to earn their uh, trust and then in turn that they might be able to represent us uh, going out to the farmers. Fantastic. Well, if there are no questions from the from the audience, uh, Tom and Max, I want to thank you for joining us today. Congratulations on your progress. Sounds like you've had uh, a big a big uh, last few months here. I'd also like to thank the audience for their uh, participation and for joining us today. As a reminder, we host these agri-food conversations every Thursday at 3 p.m. Central. So if you want to share this with a friend, we welcome you to do so. And a replay of this webinar will be emailed to you in the next 24 hours. So please do distribute. They will be prompted to sign up on Agri-Food Conversations and they can uh, see our, our library of weekly webinars that we've hosted over the last few years. So if you'd like to learn more about water management, next week we have Chris Terrell, CEO of Wexis Technology, an exciting company that remotely connects with the farmer's utility data to track irrigation pumps, buildings, processing equipment, solar arrays, and more via uh, IoT cloud technology. So if you're interested, we'd love to see you next Thursday at 3 p.m. Central. And uh, until then, hope you stay safe and, and stay well. Thank you. Thank you.